Directing doesn't end on the last shoot day. In many cases, it just begins. We had a real collection of people on the movie who really understood visual effects in a, in a very powerful and dynamic way for a film of this scale. The process was one of the most interesting I've been involved with. Early on, we brought on Digital Domain, and they became an integral partner. In many ways, with Ender's Game, it's, it's not really accurate to call our work visual effects. It's really digital production, right? And that digital production starts, you know, we're kind of first in and we're last out. In this movie, because a vast majority of it takes place in space, there are you know, characters that are completely digital. Uh, we have zero gravity, we have entire environments, we have the world. You know, so in many ways, we're world building. We're creating an entire world of Ender's Game, you know, the Enderverse, as we would call it. They weren't just the visual effects company that kind of was on the side. They were a partner and have been since the beginning. That gave us the ability to really delve into the look of the film. The technology and the environment are part of the mythology and the fiction, so to, to help realize a visual vision for the movie was critical. Bob Orsi and Alex Kurtzman came on, who've done Transformers and Star Trek. They have a great track record in, in sci-fi and, and big films. It's a massive, massive movie. It's just a huge experience. We really wanted to give the audience a sense that they were really traveling into space with Ender, not just traveling up in a spaceship, but floating in battle school. Our visual effects supervisor and director were quite particular on how they like to see things move in zero-g. Sometimes we would have to replace the entire body of the character because it was an easier way to correct some of the incorrect motion that we got from the swinging on the wires. In zero gravity, if you've got nothing to leverage against, to push off, you know, unless you, you, you propel yourself along, you're stuck and your center of gravity is bound. We'll put a hoop around someone's waist or we'll have pick points on their arms. A lot of the shots where we have where the performance was good and the lighting was good and everything was good, but you would just either see the rigs, so the cables would be obscuring something. So we would track the faces, track the cameras, try and use the set lighting, um, but ultimately we just keep the face for probably 95% of the shots, and then the rest of the frame would be CG. We could keep the emotion and the performance of the actor. Visual effects gave us the ability to really delve into the look of the film in a much richer way. For this particular shot, it basically started out with Petra sitting on a green screen block, kind of bending backwards. What we ended up doing was turning it into a shot that probably was comprised of around 75 to 100 different layers. This shot ended up taking about eight months to actually complete, being one of the more complex shots in the sequence. It looks so real. It was an amazing way to reach the audience. The technology never quite existed to realize the amazing spectacle that was in the original book. In the simulation room, I wanted to achieve a feeling that this was the greatest video game that kids could possibly play. But at the same time, when you're not on the kids' faces playing the game, but you're actually in the game itself, which turns out to be reality at some point, you really felt you were out there in space and not just in a virtual reality game. Ender is essentially the conductor. If I stand Ender in the middle of a giant sphere and place his orchestra of warriors around him and allow him, through gestural language, to control that space, what if I could zoom in and twist the world around and tilt it and do all these fabulous things that give us some spectacle. This is 43 through 57, splits, quadrant, foxtrot, 38, 89. Andrew, watch our right flank. We need backup for Bernard. I see it. I pitched this very basic idea of a guy conducting an orchestra, and I hand all that to my fantastic visual effects team, and I say, OK, help me make it real. And action. When it came down to the, the cave, you can't build a giant cave, and you can't build an infinitely unbounded volume, right? So what you can build is a walkway and, and you can get as much green screen coverage as possible and try and use the largest space you have on the, on the NASA lot. We were incredibly lucky to shoot at the NASA Mishu facility. It turned out to be this great cultural exchange between the space industry and the film industry. We get the shots delivered to us. Um, first thing we do is 
is key off the green screen so we can, we can get a nice clean uh, alpha to kind of place the action behind the actors or in front of the actors in some cases. We made a call to, to deliberately light them differently to the environment. We set up this logic that that's coming from the projector that can create a holographic realization of unbounded infinity of space. There are, inside the battle school sets alone, I think there were about 4,500, I may not have the number exactly, individual lights and lighting. It's all individually wired through circuit boards. You can say, we need to bring down that light on bed number four by 20%. Tap, tap, the And so you light the set from existing built lighting. And you're changing it constantly to manipulate the mood. There's a clear distinction between how the Formics move and behave and how Ender's troops behave. And the idea is that there's more of a hive mind behind the Formics. They move more like, like birds or school of fish, so they're much more of a flocking behavior, which is something we started developing pretty early on the show. It's a bit of a challenge layering upwards of 10 to 15,000 different elements in a single shot. We managed to make it through. I'm really, really proud and, and thankful to the guys who created that work. And these are the most cutting edge special effects that you've seen in a movie. Hundreds of artists worked on visuals, and I think they did a phenomenal job.